Well, everybody, we're, uh, we're in Kirkcubbin in County Down, and we're with Samuel and Thomas Steele. Samuel, where are we? You're in the Ars Peninsula, County Down, and you're at Ruray Farm, and you are very welcome. Thank you very Andy's. much. This is, obviously, it's a big dairy farm. Can you just give us a little bit of a rundown as to what you do on this farm here? Uh, I suppose we could give you a wee bit of history. We've sort of gradually over probably the past oh, 20 years, we've slowly been building up. Whenever me and Samuel would have come home from the likes of Greenmount College, uh, back then we we're milking really just over 100 cows. Uh, steadily through the years, we've sort of progressed, added each year to the herd, built up. Uh, and as I say, we've expanded the herd, we've accumulated more, the farm has grown. Uh, and as I say, then we've, we've got to the stage right here now, currently uh, milking around 580 cows. Uh, and we're doing just over 10,000 litres per cow. That's pretty impressive. I think it's important just to say to the viewers that I first would have met you guys maybe 20 years ago working to a local contractor down here. Because you guys love your machinery as well, and I know you, <laughs> Samuel, you really like your machinery. Yeah, yeah. What, what you have been doing, like a bit of contracting work, you know, throughout the years as well? I, it was probably more so when the me and Thomas both sort of left school, we were 16, had sort of eased off a bit more now and we're more concentrating on the cows and whatever. We still do it, but aye, we're, we're, we, like our, we like our toys too, so we do, so ah yes. It seems to be a little bit of a division in the, on the toy front. It seems ah. to be a green side and a red side. Ah, there, uh, there would be a wee bit there, yeah. yeah, Who, yeah. Who's what or what's the story here? <laughs> what's what? Going back, I suppose we were predominantly case before, uh, and then John Deere, the, the green machine, has got sort of slipped in. But uh, I suppose going between the two, it keeps the dealers on their toes, and as I said, there's, there's, uh, it allows you sort of flexibility between the two, so it does. But Absolutely, and it's February, and as February is dubbed February, we thought it would be great to come out to one of Northern Ireland's leading progressive dairy farms, and we know. Um, from history that you were a dard focus farm if I've got that right and so you and the user used with a lot of people coming here and doing farm walks obviously not in a COVID situation yeah. and you also do a lot of work with uh, you know over the years with kids and schools and you've brought a lot of kids in so, so you like teaching and educating the young ones a little yeah. bit about the dairy industry and so we just thought it was a great opportunity for us to come out and you know just touch on it as well. No, you're saying they're the kids and stuff. They're they're the next generation, so yeah, their 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 wee minds are like sponges, so they will soak everything in, and you you, you don't say anything that you don't want them to do, <laughs> and because uh, <laughs> they'll always remember it. So uh, it's sort of more of a you know to know that the, it doesn't just come out of the fridge, the milk bottle. It doesn't come out of the fridge. It's our industry, so it's our way to publicize or yeah. publicize it probably and uh, it's, it's a good way for them to learn what everything comes from, you know, and what everything does. You yeah, know. I think that's very important because, like, I mean, you know, my own wife's a school teacher and she would say to me sometimes kids just think milk is something that comes out of a plastic bottle yeah. in a supermarket. And, you know, it is important that we try and help educate them, but I'm going to bounce to you, Thomas. Talk a wee bit of tackle for us here. What are we looking at? What we're using to milk the cows here today, it's a 60 point rotary. Uh, it's a, an external one, so basically the operator is located on the outside, not on the inside. Um, roughly a rotation takes 10 minutes, so every 10 minutes we're milking 60 cows. Uh, at the minute there, there's just over about, there's about 520 going through. From we start to we finish is approximately two hours. That's milking, washing up, all done and dusted in the two hours. So it's a very fast, efficient way of milking a large number of cows. And if I'm right in saying it's quarter past two, so this is your afternoon slot. When do you come back in again in the evening time for user on the three times a day? We'll start in at the, in the evening. Now. We'll start in at uh, half seven get the cows in then 10 to 8 milking, uh, putting units on, uh, about three times a day and yeah. And when it comes to like um, 
feeding the cows? Do you do the, you know the sort of work yourselves, or do you help bring in a specialist team, or you know when it comes to nutrition? But it's it's a whole it's a whole game as in you know your forage quality. You know it doesn't matter who you have feeding the cows. If you haven't got the the building blocks there to build it on, you know you can feed as much meal as you want. You'll never replace that good forage, and that's that's what we're trying to do here is produce top quality forage to get as much milk from forage out of our cows as we can uh, and as I said it's trying to produce profitable milk that's what we're trying to do. So then silage, silage here has to be a big deal with, with, a, with a herd of cows this size it must be a big a big deal trying to get that right. Typically Simon when would you just kick off? I know every year is different and the weather changes but first, are you the April man? Uh, or? First cut uh, I've seen this cut, I think, the uh, 22nd of April, Wednesdays, I think, one time. Uh, it, it all just depends on that year. Uh, we always try to aim for entering that start of May, uh, but it could vary a week either side, uh, and we'll try to make as good, it, high quality studies as we can. Is it a, like a, th a three cut system, or if you ever we used it? They tend to take four. There'd be a lot of our ground there that wouldn't be, we wouldn't be grazing it. So, uh, they wouldn't be well fenced or nothing, so we try to take, take a fourth cut off it then as well. So we do. And a bit of maize silage? And I would grow 100 and 120 acres of maize, and then a bit of whole crop, and we grow wheat and barley too. So whatever we think we need for whole crop to stretch us into maize, then we, we cut it early enough for whole crop. So there's quite a bit of milk from forage then, Thomas? Well, we've even uh, sort of taken on another step as well. Protein has become a big buzzword, and you know, protein's getting harder to source, etc. So we're actually growing our own protein on farm through Lucerne. So we'll take three or four cuts of that as well, okay. uh, and we we'll use that. So it allows us to reduce the amount of soy, etc., that we need in the ration. Uh, and I say we're, it's, we're producing that a bit more cheaply, growing it ourselves. There has been some horror stories floating about lately well, about soy. That's scary, <laughs> so yeah. boats and whatnot. So mm. I. Um, and, and do you find the protein crops a good, you know, a good job? So, like? so it's our land down here because we're a nice free draining uh, gravelly land down here and uh, it takes that sort of, it's quite drought resistant. We'd find, you know, we said there we kick off early with silage. Uh, come second cut, you know, if we get into maybe sort of June time, June, June, July, August, we could actually be in a drought down here where we have no grass at all. So that's where the maize and the lucerne both complement quite well because in a drought situation they'll grow on. They're a very uh, deep root crop. Yeah. They are, you know, so they'll be able to soak the, up whatever moisture they can okay, further yes. down. So it, it, so it just works. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 It's like an insurance policy for us nearly that if we if we get a bad grass year, well, our maize and lucerne will be that bit better. But then also you'll get that maybe one year in seven where your maize and lucerne's not as good, and I say you have good grass, so it sort of balances out.
outside, just when I arrived in, I seen a couple of cat shovels, uh -huh. tally handers. You don't see that many, you know, being, you know, you don't see that many cat shovels and you were just saying you love them. I have a, I have a very good friend with a, with a local cat deal, uh, salesman and then Johnson Gultons took on the cat that time that John Deere and cat emerged in the UK. That is correct, and yes. Was sort of the service and the backup that we get from Johnson Gulton at that time, they you know, took on the Creamery Agency, but at that time, uh, we sort of nearly couldn't go by them. Uh, but they're a very, we looked at all, we had different types before that, we looked at all, but um, the cat's just a very sturdy machine for what the work we're doing with it, you know. Aye, and with those number of cows, guys, it's bound to be a busy machine, you know, they're bound to be doing a lot of work. Aye, well there's, there's two of them there now, so there's one you nearly go to all the time, the year one, and the other one's there for that busy hour or two of the day that the two would be going. And then it's, we've, the problem is also with that many sort of about farms too, and say like a load of fertilizer comes in or something out there, minerals or something, he's lifted off. Say if you bring one back, the whole way back, it's, it's, it's there in the yard. I see also what looks to be a fairly new diet feeder. Yeah, this year, uh, or well, sorry, last year. We, I did. This, this year and last year with yeah, COVID and all, it's all one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's just well, the way it's went. Put the two of them down as a write-off. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, this year, uh, our, our old feeder was um, six years old and she'd done a right lot of mixing and stuff and she was done and uh, it was a tub and I just don't want to try the back the tallow just for curiosity's sake, no other fault of any feeder or anything and Keenan seemed to be the the job at the time at the time so uh, have a well, what's the Keenan. thoughts early stages then because you do get a lot of talking points when it comes to feeding uh, cows between tub feeders and yeah. paddle feeders you but, like them you know do you, are you seeing a big difference oh, everybody asks me that question yeah to sort of say oh if it's new it has to be working right like if, it, if it's not working right when it's new it's never going to be that great job so uh <laughs> it's, good point. it's going well at the minute and probably compared to what i had before the other one was well, war and that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, it's, it's making yeah. a lovely mix. The, the, the paddle definitely does produce a nicer mix and more even. Uh, Fluffier well, mix. Well, or, you know, it's, as I was, it's early days yet. It's it's three, four, five years down the line whilst well, you start giving trouble. Yeah. At this stage, it's a bit apples and oranges, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Honeymoon period. <laughs> it <laughs> certainly <laughs> looks the part, you know. Ah, yeah, no. We're See a good, good case tractor on it there, too. Ah, yeah. <laughs> but I, one thing I have to ask you just as well, just uh, watching it uh, feeding earlier on, you have a bridge. Ah, uh, yeah. I, I've never seen a bridge before. It was... Uh, What's that all about? It, it was actually off the back of... Uh, we're not far from Port of Ferry, and the ferry comes in and there's like a, a, bit, there's a, like a ramp in it and it comes yes. down and lets the cars off. So uh, we actually had a group of farmers here, they were from uh, Denmark, or, and uh, they'd, they'd came around and they said that oh, with, they get all excited about their clean areas and their dirty areas and they've been to several uh, Northern Ireland farms. He says to me, Northern Ireland farmers are all crazy because they mix their clean areas and dirty. He says, we do not do that. He says, we keep them separate. And it sort of got our sort of minds going that, you know, this is something we need to do because we had to walk cows across where that bridge is at. And we're, we were planning just on washing it with a hose, but we're milking three times a day, so we'd need washed three times a day. It's another job for a man to do. So what we decided there was, it was through a guy who does a bit of engineering, we built this bridge mechanism that goes up and down uh, to allow the, the, basically lets the tractors and robot across and keeps them clean. And then whenever we fold it back up, or we fold it up then the cows can walk across it then, so. And you just mentioned there the robot, I heard he was your guy's best friend. The, the robot goes every two hours and at the, when, you, when it's not there to do it, whenever the, at, at that time, it was 2012 or whatever, that snow and ice was, and the sensors were just all uh, iced up. Yeah. And at uh, sea time, I remember, to actually do that. Uh, there was a, a line there in front of the cows, so, yeah. There was, but if, like, when you're at silage, or you know, if you're busy with cows, whatever, it's been, this time, it's every two hours on the button. It's, it's going to two o'clock in the morning. You know, it, it's, 
getting done when it needs done work. We were doing it with a wheel, and if you got it done maybe three, four times in the day, and you're coming over here at maybe 11 o'clock at night to push up silage, you're back yes. in the yard again early the next morning, you know, it's one less job to do. Do you reckon there's a slight increase in dry matter intake with it being, you know, shuffled in three or four times a day, or? Oh, de definitely. Uh, yeah, what, there's actually a wee, set, a wee beep, sort of whenever it goes along, it, it'll beep every so often. That stimulates the cow to actually get up out of the cube because it, it knows it's fresh food there. Ah. And you, you will see when it comes along, you'll see like the ears prick up and the cows will get up out of the cubo and come over and start eating. So that's stimulating her to actually go and eat where she would just be lazy and lie in the cubicle otherwise. So I definitely, we seen that time we switched it off. Uh, we didn't actually have it severely cold here as such, it was just that bit of snow. But like, uh, yield, yields dropped about just over a litre of cow. Wow. Over, over that sort of space of a uh, couple of days. When you're, when you're, you know, 500 plus cows, litre of cow, uh -huh, that's up. A few days. L last weekend, the snow, uh, our low yielders, that side of the sheds open and it was snowing in. And okay, it was just one day, but over that one day, the low yielders, they, they dropped about 12% on their milk um, just in that yeah, one yeah. day. And there's a lot of cows in that shed, so there is, you know, so. So, what's your favourite bit of plant on the farm? Your one, the one machine that you like the most? Oh, I would have to say um, a 170, 6170 R. The, the track exactly. on there. Yeah. Same question to you. Uh, so I would do most of the well, the fertilizer sowing and the uh, spraying. And there's nothing nicer. I don't like spending an awful lot of time in a tractor, but there's nothing nicer than heading off into a field either with a fertilizer sower or the sprayer. You're doing you're doing good. You're out there making things grow, and you know you're you can see things moving. And you're out there. You're peace and quiet. You're on your own and you get into a big field, you fold your booms out in the sprayer and away you go. And I say, uh, to me, that, that's my therapy, as it were, that you, you get away out and do something like that there. So I say, enjoy that bit of field work, so I do. My once said to me, your telehandler, your tether, and your dat feeder should be the things that you change every three to four years in a dairy farm. Because you need your telehandler, you need your dat feeder feeder your cows, and we have a tether, and that's where your high quality settings comes in. You were so, running lellies back in my day. Still are. Still running Still are. Yeah. yeah. Well look guys, honestly, thank you very much for allowing us to come and take a wee look around. It's been fantastic. But like, uh, you know, it's a fantastic system and uh, full power to you and credit to you as, as a business. I mean, I can only say from many, many years ago what you have done in the last, you know, 15, 20 years is a lot of growth and that's hard work and uh, to be such supporters of the industry is very important and wanting to encourage and you know the next generation uh, from both of you is, is out and about here flat out and, and loving life so isn't that it's great to see so thank you very much and uh, you and i need to talk because i just happen to know there's a lovely 215 command pro <laughs> demo on its way oh, <coughs> <right>. <coughs> <coughs>